Three years after hailing him as a franchise future quarterback, the New York Jets traded Sam Darnold to the Carolina Panthers. The third overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft struggled in the Big Apple, and without a proven quarterback on the roster, the Jets are expected to select Darnold's replacement with the number two overall pick in this upcoming draft. The leading candidate is BYU's Zach Wilson. In return from Darnold, looking at that big trade, the Jets received three picks, a sixth rounder in the 2021 NFL Draft, and a second rounder and fourth rounder in 2022. Let's welcome in our Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco to break down the Jets. So when the Jets traded away Sam Darnold, the quarterback position obviously became a top priority. So Brady, do you think that they are all in? on Zach Wilson. Well, that's what all the reports will tell you. Now, I would caution people out there, be careful what you listen to at this time of the year because there's a lot of smoke screens, things that are thrown out there, but much like the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Trevor Lawrence number one, this seems to be the second worst kept secret in the NFL so far this offseason in regards to the draft. It looks like it's going to be Zach Wilson. This, this we know, it's definitely going to be a quarterback. They're taking a QB. It sounds like Zach Wilson. Pete, I don't know about you, but I'd be surprised based on how obvious this seems at this point that they would go another direction. Yeah, but you're putting a little mystery into it, Brady. I like it. Uh, maybe uh, you know something or maybe you're hearing something. I, look, it's going to be Zach Wilson. Uh, I'm not saying it should be Zach Wilson, but I think the Jets are all in on him. They, they went to his pro day. They love his arm. They love his ability to get the ball out, uh, throw from all kinds of levels and outside the pocket. And I think he's going to be the guy. Now, whether he should be the guy is an entirely different issue, uh, but I think he will be the guy when the Jets ultimately make the pick. It's a good point by Pete. The reason being is, look, I, I would not rank him as the second best quarterback in this draft class. However, that being said, that doesn't mean that they don't think he is, or that doesn't mean that they don't feel like he's the best fit for their system there in New York. So the bottom line is they're going to pick whoever they think is next best after Trevor Lawrence because the truth of the matter is everyone would take Trevor Lawrence if they had the opportunity to. The Jets don't, but I think they'll be fine settling for Zach Wilson. So there is a little bit of mystery there. It's not a proven going. Well, it's a mystery yet. until it happens, yeah. right? Like everything it, it, is. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> everything is. And if the Jets do select a quarterback at number two overall, they would be the first team to select two quarterbacks within the top three overall picks in a four-year span. So something we'll obviously be keeping an eye on. And it seems like they are going to be selecting a quarterback. I don't think there's much of a question there. So moving on, the Jets signed a players in free agency that's including Carl Lawson and Corey Davis when looking at their offseason as a whole Brady how do you think they did in free agency well look they've got a lot of work to do um, you know they're, they're trying the best they can to build up this roster to prepare itself for you know whatever is coming in the future for you know Zach Wilson ultimately but the reality is, you know, it's, it's going to take more than one offseason via free agency. It's going to take a number of drafts before this roster gets anywhere that's going to be competitive with, with the Buffalo Bills, who are the top of the AFC East right now. So, you know, getting a guy like Carl Lawson, you know, Pete's, I know you're a big fan of him. I think he's maybe set up to have a breakout year. Sheldon Rankins has flashed during his time with the New Orleans Saints, so that helps beef up the interior. But this roster still needs a lot of work. I mean, you could basically pick... Pretty much any position outside of maybe left tackle that you could say that they could go out and draft a player to kind of upgrade this roster at this point in time. So they, they did what they could. Uh, we'll see what Corey Davis can do and following up what he did last year for Tennessee, Pete. But the bottom line is they just need a ton of help. Yeah, I think they took the approach, and Brady, you're pretty much spot on with that, is they had so many needs that... Yeah, you could sign one or two of the big dollar deals, but you had to get guys in at a lot of spots, and they did that. I mean, they got guys in uh, on defense, particularly at a lot of spots, and that's something they had to do. And we know they needed wide receiver help, and they addressed that a couple different ways uh, with uh, Corey Davis and Keelan Cole. So, yeah, I think it's the right approach, but Brady's spot on. They need more help. They need another year of building this roster, and they're going to have to build it around their quarterback. So uh, it's not going to be an overnight process for the New York Jets that's for sure you guys are being so nice to each other right now I'm not used to seeing this just agreeing with everything on this Wednesday I kind of hey, like we it we got the draft next week I know so we'll see how that plenty goes. of time to fight all right well looking at the team Pete you said they need a lot of help obviously quarterback is going to be at the top of the list but Pete what are some of the other, other needs that they that you expect for them to fulfill in that draft coming up 
Well, I think they need to get a corner. I mean, first and foremost, you look at their starting corners, they have some issues there. Uh, they, they like some of their younger players, but I think they need to get another one in there. They also need to get edge rush help. I mean, you know, getting Carl Lawson is one thing, but you need help on the other side. Uh, they need to find a guy who can influence the quarterback opposite him. Uh, they might go and address that, you know, in the with their second first round pick. Corner, edge rush, two most important things in my mind for them. And they can also use some more help on the offensive line, as most teams in this league can. Uh, but I think when you look at their focus, it should be on the defensive side of the ball. I'm right there with you, Pete. I mean, the two positions that really I think it helped this defense the most, edge rusher, cornerback. Uh, you know, we go back to last year, you look at that kind of blitz-heavy scheme from Greg Williams that actually kind of hurt them to a fault before he was dismissed. I, I think most people would agree uh, he was a little bit too aggressive at times, but the reason being is he needed to dial up pressure in order to get pressure. They need to be able to find themselves the ability to have guys off the edge alongside of Carl Austin and Sheldon Rankins from the interior that can get to the, get to the opposing quarterback without having to sacrifice additional guys in coverage. So, uh, unfortunately, their back end can't handle that at this point in time, and their front end can't get pressure with only bringing four. That's going to be the biggest focus, I think, in this year's draft. After they take quarterback at number two, it's going to be potentially who Who's the best player available between two positions? Cornerback, edge rusher. If they went anywhere else besides those two, I mean, I could see it because of the need on their roster, but they should still be able to get a Tyson Campbell out of Georgia at the cornerback position. There's a chance that you might be able to get Russo, Phillips out of Miami, potentially Owe uh, out of Penn State, a guy who I think would fit well within their scheme. So there's a number of players that should be available at that spot to help out that defense. Yeah, Pete, I want to have you follow up on that too. Obviously, quarterback at number two, that number 23 pick is coming over um, that was acquired from the Jamal Adams trade to the Seahawks. So what are some names that you've heard out there that you think would work well with the Jets there at 23? Yeah, and Brady mentioned a couple of them, but Aziz Ojolari, if he was still there, is another one, another edge rusher. Uh, I think he could be in play. Jalen Phillips from Miami could also be in play. Quiddy Pay, if he were still around. It's the same guys. The edge rush guys will probably go in that, you know, 9, 17, 16 range to 25, and I think there's going to be a run on them at, at some point. And then if you're looking for a corner, I think Asante Samuel might be in play there. You know, Tyson Campbell, another one. Uh, you know, Greg Newsom is another one that could go there as well. It's edge rusher, it's corner, but here's a little wild card to throw out there. What about a dynamic running back? If they decided they wanted to help the young quarterback and, and draft a running back in the first round, maybe a Travis Etienne uh, in that spot, who knows? Uh, it could be a possibility, but I think they should go defense. If I were the GM, I would pick defensive players. Come on, Pete, there's no chance they take a running back in that spot just because they're helping out a rookie quarterback. I mean, you of all people would never just subscribe to that I theory. wouldn't. I I'm just saying. I knew you guys would, would find at some point. They, they did that with Le'Veon Bell, Wait, and I'm you bashed them I for would. that. I'm just throwing it out there. Unbelievable. You would even circulate that. There. Unbelievable you'd even circulate that this time of year, Pete. That's just irresponsible on your part. Well, okay, so maybe not... Everything gets circulated this time of the year. That, that is the point. That's why we're on the show right now. But, okay, so maybe maybe not in that first round. And obviously the first round is exciting and there's so much going on. But there's a lot of talent in this year's draft class. So if you look at that second day, too, they have picks number 32 in round two. They have 66 and 86 in round three. So, Brady, give me some names of guys that you think they can look out for. Yeah, I mean, I think outside of cornerback and edge rusher, whichever one you don't take with that second first round pick, and this, you're obviously looking for the opposite of that, you know, uh, excuse me, in the first round, second pick. You're obviously looking for that in the second round. Here are just some names, though, because even though they took Denzel Mims in the first round last year and they added Corey Davis, they still could use some help. Amon Ross St. Brown, to me, would be a steal. I think he's going to have a tremendous NFL career. Cornell Powell is a bigger-bodied wide receiver with some top-end speed, big playmaking ability that really excelled this past season and kind of stepping up next to Amari Rogers for Clemson. And then I think you look on the offensive line. You know, you find an interior player like Josh Myers out of Ohio State. He should be there mid-late rounds. Walker Little should be there somewhere in the mid-rounds if you want to beef up, beef up that, that offensive tackle position. And then running backs. I think Pete touched on something, but I'm just shocked that he brought it up with a second pick in the first round because usually he doesn't subscribe to that theory because you can find a Trey Sermon at Ohio State. You can find a Jamar Jefferson who had a fantastic year this past year out of Oregon State in those mid to late rounds that should really help and improve your roster. So, um, I, I, look, again, you can almost go anywhere uh, with where this team sits at right now on their roster in comparison to the rest of the uh, AFC East division. 
Brady, not all these GMs are as smart as I am. They do their own thing. I mean, let's be real about it. So they do draft running backs. We've seen guys go in the top 10. We saw Saquon Barkley go in the top 10. Uh, you know, Zeke Elliott went be before Jalen Ramsey. I mean, we've seen it happen. So not that I would do it. I just threw it out there as a possibility because you hear the Jets want it back. So that's why I said that. By the way, guys down the line, I have... Uh, second round corners. If you don't take a corner in the first round, Eric Stokes, Tyson Campbell, the two kids from Georgia. If you do take a corner, I don't think Greg Russo's going in the first round. I think he's a second rounder now. Ronnie Perkins from Oklahoma, a guy I really love. And there's a running back for you, Kenneth Gainwell. He's explosive, opted out last year, but uh, the year before it was outstanding. So I would take my running back in the third round, but these guys often, uh, you know, they buck the trends and they take him in the first round. He's trying to cover his bases. Well, he's always trying to do it. <laughs> That's what he's it's part of he's his always job, trying right? to cover no, his bases. He, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> but you would just talk about it and circulate just in, in case. the event that it happens just that you mentioned it. So thank you for that, Pete. All right. Well, thank you both. Both of you stay put. We got Chris Hassel coming up, and we're going to talk some more teams out there. But looking at the projections for the 2021 season, I mean, they're not looking so hot. The odds makers don't foresee really much uh, fortune for the retooling Jets squad, as you can see there. Regular season win total is at six right now. That's towards the bottom of the opening odds. So they're actually tied with the Jags with the over under of six. The Detroit Lions and the Houston Texans are the only teams out there with a lower projection. Don't go anywhere after the break. Chris Hassel takes over HQ where he'll break down the Broncos with our experts. Drew Locke and draft needs, they are coming your way. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.